Mm -hmm. okay. Well, one thing we're expecting, and many analysts are saying will be inevitable in the incoming administration is charter change. Because the president-elect ran under a party that espouses federalism. What do you think will be the impact of a constitutional change on our economic post pandemic economic recovery well i would i, I wouldn't do that uh, in the in the short run or in the immediate uh, term that can that can wait i think the the more urgent matters to attend to is uh, as i've said uh, you know finding ways of growing the economy because uh, especially we have high inflation we have a uh, rising inflation and then we have these exogenous factors coming from uh, ukraine and russia the disturbance and uh, other other you know uh, and china china is not uh, growing as fast as, as it should it should mm -hmm. so these are the exogenous factors that are also going to be uh, adverse to our economic growth that's mm -hmm. why you know, there's uh, a lot of uh, effort needed in terms of, uh, you know, fuel, fueling economic growth. Hmm. Sir, when you From say, up, yes, sir. sir, sir, when you yes, say sir. that you wouldn't recommend uh, that uh, he go into it yet, are you referring to charter change uh, itself or are you referring to federalism? Because, of course, we do remember from before uh, your concerns about the shift to federalism. For uh, both, uh, uh, Ed. I, I would not uh, go into that uh, on the first year of the of the new administration. At least on the first why year. Not? Why not? Mm. Uh, well, yes, it's, why not? It's not. It's not as urgent as uh, you know the 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 fiscal crisis that we are facing, and the you know the uh, making sure that the economy grows uh, at uh, six at least six percent. Heavily in debt, you think our financial problems will make it even more difficult to shift to federalism? Because we remember that was your main opposition, no? In right. the, in this administration to the shift, yeah. natin kaya, it's too expensive. At pag na implement, hindi natin kaya lalo. Uh, that, you, you think that makes it even more complicated our current financial woes? Oh yes, yes. It's going to be even more uh, difficult to uh, to do that now, with uh, with the economy not in not in as good shape as it was when we were talking about that federalism. Yeah. But when when will it ever be a good time? I mean, <laughs> it's not like uh, this is the first time we're talking about federalism. Uh, will it? Is it really something that uh, is worth pursuing? And if so. Uh, when, within the next six years, would be the ideal time to pursue it, if it's even part of the of the per policy of the new government? Uh, frankly, I'm not keen about uh, federalism because uh, our regions are so unequally, unequally, uh, you know, yeah. they are very unequal in terms of uh, development, in terms of resilience, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, resources. So it's very difficult to have uh, federal, fe federal states or federal regions that are so unequal in terms of, uh, uh, you know, economic growth and uh, uh, resource, uh, ba resource base and all that. So, and even mm -hmm. in terms of uh, education and uh, health system capacity, it's very, very unequal. If you, if you compare the, say, uh, Calabarzon or uh, Central Luzon with uh, with Bicol, it's a it's a very unequal uh, comparison. Mm -hmm. And then uh, <laughs> Eastern Visayas is another uh, lagging region. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I I would not you know I'm not you know I would not uh, advocate. Uh, I'm not an advocate for federalism. 